Okay, so let's go ahead and close out of uh, our running project. And the first thing we need to do is add some graphics to actually draw to the screen. So I will come down here, my Solution Explorer again, and I'm going to create a new folder to keep my graphics in. I'm going to say I add new folder. I'm just going to call this one GFX. And uh, then you can browse out to anywhere on your computer where you have your graphics stored. In this case, I'm just going to bring in a picture of Rad Marvin's face. And you can just drag and drop those graphics right in that folder and it will be added to your game project. Very simple. And now we'll do the exact same thing that we did with our sprite fonts. We're going to go up to our globals folder and we're going to right click and add a new class. And this one we're just going to call textures as a global reference to all of our graphics. So you can uh, set the name there, select add, and uh, so in our textures class we can Add a public reference, shared, call it rad avatar, and I will be bringing this one in as a texture 2D. <clears throat> and we'll do this again, we'll do the same thing that we did in our sprite fonts. We're going to create a load sub. So we'll say public shared sub load. And I have to create a reference to the graphic. So I will say rad um, avatar equals uh, globals dot content dot load. And this time the asset type is going to be of texture 2D. So all your graphics throughout your games will be called texture 2Ds. That is the actual graphics type. And again, we'll use our path uh, GFX to radface.png. Now, again, we don't need the uh, file extension, so we'll just say radface. Very simple. Let's go ahead and save our project. Now we're ready to go uh, load that into the game project and uh, try drawing it. So. Let's go over to our game1.vb and uh, first thing we need to do is go to the uh, load content section. I'm going to go ahead and create a little note to myself here. Load um, fonts, textures, and sounds. So this is where all of that occurs. Uh, we've already got our fonts load, and so now we need to load our textures. So we're going to reference our textures class and the load sub. Now we should be able to draw a picture. So let's go down to our drawing sub, and uh, we'll go ahead and just draw it below the sprite fonts that we tested earlier. Test textures. Um, let's do globals dot sprite batch dot draw. Now, first thing we need to bring in or tell it what to draw is our image. So we're going to reference rad avatar from our textures class. And much like in the old GDI tutorials, we will supply a source and a destination rectangle. Um, the destination tells it where on the screen to draw, and the source tells it what part of the image graphic, um, or what part of the image we want to uh, grab to draw. So if we had like a tile set, we could select just a piece of that if we wanted to draw, you know, a tile or something. In this case, um, it's just a single image. So we're just going to grab the whole thing. Anyway, let's do a new rectangle for the destination. Um, <clears throat> we're going to tell it, uh, we don't want it to draw right on top of uh, where we're writing the, our fonts. So 
let's just draw this uh, 10 pixels to the right, 50 pixels down from the top, and of course 32 by 32. We could actually change these up to uh, scale the image if we wanted to. Uh, that's one way to do image scaling. So uh, now we need our source rectangle and since the whole image is only 32 pixels by 32 pixels we're just gonna say new rectangle starting in the top left corner at 0, 0. We're gonna go out 32 by 32 pixels. And uh, I went through this before on the previous uh, tutorial, and this is where we select the color tint of the graphic. So uh, if you recall correctly, the uh, white color tells it to only use what you see in the image, essentially. Uh, if we wanted to tint the picture, we could set it to red or blue or some other color we wanted to set it to. Or you could also change the uh, opacity value and things like that. Anyway, if we did this correctly, we should be able to go ahead and run our project and see the image that we brought in. And there it is. Perfect. It's uh, exactly what we were hoping for. Uh, like I was saying before, say we wanted to scale this up, we could do uh, 64 by 64 or something like that. And remember, anytime you scale an image up, uh, you're going to lose information. It's going to be kind of fuzzy. Uh, there are ways to control how sharp it appears um, with point clamping and things like that. We'll actually get into that later on because that is something that uh, I like to do on these older, you know, if you're going for a retro game feel, when you scale it up, you don't want it to try to smooth out the edges and things like that, because the old 8-bit games had kind of uh, grainy edges. Anyway, uh, if you also want to see what the color tinting does, we could try this. Um, let's make him uh, pink and see if we can uh, see any difference in our image. So you can see that white border in the background that uh, we had up there is now a pink hue. Try something like blue. Wow. And get kind of a ghostly nighttime effect, which can actually be kind of uh, cool in your games. Anyway, I uh, think that pretty much wraps up this tutorial. Go ahead and experiment with those settings and um, I will try to get back to you guys soon, and we can continue on. Uh, thanks a lot. I will catch you later. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.